know, if you're going to get the nation's attention about marriage, uh, would there be one time of the year that you would think you would want to do that? Anybody want to guess when that is? Come on, ladies, when is it? Valentine's. That's it. You know, the Valentine's. So we're talking about National Marriage Week. That's what we're talking about, which actually has gone global. And uh, we're excited to have Sheila Weber with us today, Executive Director of the National uh, Marriage Week Initiative. So Sheila, you come and tell us all about it, and we want to get engaged. So much. Um, National Marriage Week USA runs from February 7th to the 14th, the week leading up to Valentine's Day. And we add the USA on the end because we're so thrilled that this is a global movement. In fact, 12 years ago, Marriage Week started in the UK. It's now grown to 12 countries, Germany, Ireland, Australia, Czech Republic, and, and soon to become 20 countries around the world. And we're a licensed uh, member of Marriage Week International. Um, the goals of, of Marriage Week are to elevate marriage as a national issue, particularly through the media and news stories. Secondly, to spur more marriage education opportunities and ways for people to get help with their marriage. And thirdly, to promote the benefits of marriage because all the research is clear that marriage brings greater financial stability it greatly uh, leads to longer life and better health. The, the results show children do far better. That's the, the biggest issue that we're dealing with, is that children um, have less teen pregnancy and less uh, prison, uh, less addiction issues, and they perform far better in school. And basically the research shows that married people are happier. It just leads to greater personal happiness. Um, but I want to share just a personal story of why I know that the church is the school for marriage and why, if the church will focus on marriage, it can grow. And this is a personal story. I have a sister-in-law who years ago was very hostile to the issue of faith. But about 10 years ago, one of her friends invited her and my brother-in-law to a one-night uh, presentation at a local church on how to have a better marriage. So she went, and she tells me now, she says, oh my gosh, I'm sitting there poking my husband every other sentence that this guy has coming out of his mouth on that relates to us. Oh my gosh, that's us, that's us. Well, the long and short of it is she has been a, a very um, committed member of that local church for the last 10 years. And so that church met a very deep need in her life. They weren't having tremendous stresses, but they certainly wanted to learn how to have a better marriage. And that church met her need and she came back and she has grown in her faith and has become a student of the Bible. And it's remarkable to see the transformation in one of my relatives' lives. So I'm here to tell you this is worth it for the local church. Um, we had, uh, we've only been happening for two years. So the first year, we, the first thing we did was we built an architecture of a website that's very interactive. And there's a reason that's, uh, that's important because we've been posting hundreds of events all around the country during the week leading up to uh, Valentine's Day. And we'll just show a little screenshot of this um, website because I just want people to know that we have loads of research, the latest research. We have a very specific area that's helpful for the church. So we have resources for the church. And in our first year, we had a pastors and leaders webinar with Chuck Colson, Sam Rock Access. It's a 45-minute instructional tool. We had 1,200 leaders uh, register and listen in, which we were very happy with for our very first year. So you have other areas where um, um, tools you can use, very creative tools. It's been mentioned about a great date night. We have an idea for a Valentine's great date night. Uh, we list as many of the uh, wonderful marriage curricula as we can in different categories. Some, obviously, you have large conferences that can be brought into your local community. Others are just uh, workbooks. Others are DVDs with discussion guides. They're all listed as resources, and we, we just want people to know about it. But one of our big uh, goals is to focus on the media because we need to spin a new story on marriage. And it, it was referenced about last fall, had a Time Magazine cover story which really was asking the question, is marriage obsolete? To which we say a resounding no. What's obsolete about financial stability, better health, happier children? So, but the problem with that story, we didn't or originate that story, we didn't launch it, but nobody 
uh, had been consulted in the marriage movement, and that story did not tell all the hundreds of thousands of things that happen all the time in this country. So the story created a real downside uh, attitude in this country rather than um, you know, telling the things where people can go and get the help they need. There was really no reference in that story to where people can get the help they need. And that's one of the goals of National Marriage Week. So just to, to reemphasize that particular aspect, in 2010, we, we launched a major radio campaign. And we were on five major radio networks um, and had a, a, an awful lot of attention that way. Uh, one of our colleagues at the Institute of American Values got a commentary uh, printed in the Wall Street Journal that week. Um, we had a Fox News a strategy room, a whole hour show on a Fox News strategy room hosted by the religion reporter Lauren Green, and our chairman Chuck Stetson was on that. Um, and then this, this year, in 2011, we also, again, kept striving for media attention. Um, and so we, we were fe uh, featured on CBS Sunday Morning. We were um, on CBN, a live interview down in Virginia Beach with Pat Robertson. Um, I was on about 30 radio programs in three days, many of whom had network shows of four to 600 stations. Uh, again, we were the featured ministry partner on K-11 Air One, which has four million uh, audience. But we were very pleased that we branched out and we, we engaged the, um, the U.S. Catholic Council of Bishops, which we're very happy that they started to see how significant this is, and they encouraged their churches to participate in National Marriage Week and I'll get into how you do that. Um, and we also had governors uh, issue proclamations. We have mayors issuing pro proclamations. And the very first time that we were posted in the U.S. government, public policy circles in the media, and the, um, one of the largest efforts we put out this year is um, a national newspaper ad. And I think we can uh, actually, uh, you know what, I'm going to talk about this first, which is showing you that when you host a marriage event, we have this listing. Now we can scroll down, there'll be hundreds and hundreds of listings this year. And we'll go to the next screen to show you how easy it is. If you have an event, it's simply your city and the name of the event, your URL. We don't publish your name and email. And it's, it's just a very easy reference um, so that if you have a friend in Texas, they can hit the state and they're gonna see everything that's happening during National Marriage Week. Uh, which leads me to why we put out our, our ad. We do have a screenshot of that. And um, this is, it's a, it was actually a little larger than this, but it was posted in the Wall Street Journal Sunday during National Marriage Week, and it went to 43 regional and uh, national papers, um, which had an audience of 6.5 million. I'm just going to read a little bit of this because it starts with a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was writing to a young married couple from his prison cell. It's not love that <coughs> keeps your marriage alive, it's marriage that keeps your love alive. And which is really the a big message of the church, that it is the covenant, yeah. it is the commitment to marriage um, that will eventually make you work at this. Individuals have more wealth and financial stability. Personally, married folks have more happiness, lifelong thriving long, love, longer lives and better health, and children with both parents at home do vastly better in school and have far less trouble with the law, teen pregnancy, and addiction. And then we can do better. It's been referenced already that taxpayers are spending at least $112 billion a year. Some estimates go much, much higher than that. We have 40% of all American babies are born out of wedlock. And um, as our friend Dr. Linda Malone Kalan said, 72% of African American babies now born out of wedlock. We're in a crisis. And as, as the nation is focusing on the economy, this is another message for the church. We are concerned about overspending and we're concerned about our deficit. Uh, so the, another message for marriage is that married people have better personal financial stability and we have more national fiscal stability because the breakdown of family is costing us as a nation. This is the, the economic cornerstone of our culture and our country. And again, that is one of the messages that we want to make sure gets out during National Marriage Week. Um, ways you can participate. Well, the, the easiest is simply launch a marriage class because and there's so many of them. So bring in a special speaker or simply have a DVD series 
and, and start the class and uh, use the workbook that comes alongside it. It can be in a home group. It can be a Sunday school class. Or you can do something really um, much more extensive and offer a marriage class at your local library or community center. Uh, I mean, I, I just can't imagine how many people you could potentially reach if you wanted to go outside the church doors and really um, meet people's very true needs or relational needs. And so the very simplest uh, steps we can think of are to host an event and post it. We say host it and post it. So please put it on our website because we want to generate attention for what you're doing. And, and we don't want just hundreds of events, and this is only our second year, but we want thousands of events. And when we have thousands of events, that's called impact. And when we have impact, I can get the media to pay attention. <laughs> so if you can help me post thousands of events, we will get some media attention. Um, I would love to turn the story from the cover of Time Magazine, which, by the way, I have worked on other cover stories for Time. I would love to turn that story from, you know, kind of is marriage dead to marriage is back. Um, or at the very least, people are recovering their marriages and here's why and how. So it really does take us all working together. Now, the, the great thing about one week a year is that it's very simple to do this. Um, I know you all have so much going on the other 51 weeks a year. We really can make a, a, a huge dent in recasting the nation's vision for marriage and reshaping the cultural story. Um, so in addition to hosting an event and posting it, and it can be very small, it could be a home group, uh, we also are encouraging people to use our PSAs. We have little public service announcements. You might have a, a website you can put it on. You might have just a local radio station you're friendly with. We're going to make this ad available next year with this bottom section as open so that somebody can uh, promote their local event in this corner. And yet you'll, you'll still have the, the message of why strengthening marriage is so critical. Hey, welcome back. You're watching Love Is Here Live, and we are live today doing this great simulcast up in Orlando, Florida at Mission America. And I'm joined today with Sheila Weber from the National Marriage Week. And uh, Sheila just made a presentation in our other room and really defined uh, what's happening across the country with marriage and what's happening uh, with this campaign. So mm -hmm. Sheila, share with us uh, a little bit about some practical next steps for people if they mm -hmm. want to get engaged specifically in the National Marriage Week, what are some things that a, a, a person can do? Well, right now they could form a committee. Uh, um, just what, to, is, what does that look like, a committee? Just you could, you could have a group of friends that says mm -hmm. we want to do something either locally in our community or just in, in the local church. And you can bring um, a conference speaker in, and there are many of them we've listed on our website to contact them or use a DVD series or start a home group during National Marriage Week. Those are the simplest things to provide um, access for people to, to strengthen their marriage and then find ways to promote it in the community. Sure. Now, for our listeners, give me some examples of maybe some, uh, w uh, when you talk about some of the events and different things that might be happening locally, what are some easy wins that you're finding like across the country when people want to do something for marriage, like a community event or something? Well, I, I know that um, there are some uh, DV, new DVD programs and movies mm -hmm. out there. Um, so we've, we've mentioned uh, Family Life has one, Art the Art of mm -hmm. Marriage. And so it's a Friday night and a Saturday. There's Love and Respect has a Friday night and a Saturday morning DVD series. Those are easy because people don't have to go away right. to a retreat. And they can still stay at home and um, manage their home life for the weekend. Oh, that's amazing. So... Uh, how many folks? How many folks right now are currently using the National Marriage Week? Like um, folks that are like posting things or, or participating, mm -hmm. uh, like this past year. Sure, this is well. Again. You know, this was only our second year, so we had um, we had more than a few hundred people who posted local events. 
which was great, but in addition to that, we're very encouraged because the Art of Marriage actually had hundreds and hundreds yeah. of others which did not get posted, but we certainly highlighted the fact that they were there and they were happening as well as Love and Respect had a significant number. So we probably had more than a thousand activities across the country, right. but we'd love to get them all individually posted there because, as I said, the more impact uh, we can show, the better. And um, I forgot to mention that we used the week to release new research and some new efforts. Uh, there's some public policy efforts in the works and, and a larger event planned for next year. And I can't say too much yet, but, but if you lend us your email. Top secret. No, but, <laughs> but it, it will be worth knowing about. Sure. And so. That's great. Now, uh, National Marriage Week is kind of uh, taking space now in this, the real state of, of really helping promote uh, not only all things marriage, but things that are, are coming um, that are going to impact different communities in different ways. And so I think uh, some of the things that we've heard already is, uh, you know, be thinking creatively even a year out how you want to, it's highlighting, highlighting things that, you know, might get attention nationally and might just get attention locally. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes, if you think about it, there's only a couple leveraging points throughout a year where we get the shot in the arm. You know, if you're a pastor, it right. might be a great time to just do some kind of a series or an event. Um, I know right. for our church, one of the things that we did was we, uh, we actually launched the Art of Marriage and then off of, which was the same part of National Marriage Week, and then at the Art of Marriage event, we actually leveraged six new classes that began right after, and they were all filled. So, and your um, church grew. And our church, <laughs> we're going to talk about it a little later, yeah. but it's just, okay. it's just crazy how right, um, right. if you could use these leveraging points strategically and maybe even get some of the firepower that the National Marriage mm -hmm. Week branding uh, can create, which would be good. Right. And I, I know for Love is Here and you guys being attached to what uh, the whole movement is doing, it's going to begin to build steam uh, and really become an effective way to promote, advertise, and leverage uh, not only champions, but the crowd for folks mm -hmm. who are looking for hope and help. Absolutely, and I love what's happened in Germany, that they started with 100 cities, now they're to 300 cities and 17,000 people participated. Wow. Granted, it's a smaller country, but this is, this is uh, the vision of what we can, we can accomplish if we all join forces. It's kind of like if you all shout at the same time and make a louder noise. Um, so That's great. That's the so, vision. So how many other countries are also doing stuff that you're aware of? Right now there are 12, and it's going up to about 20 very soon. Wow. They're in increasing. Um, yes, yeah, so it's uh, going to be a global movement. And I remember, gosh, I remember Earth Day years and years ago started, and they used the mainline Protestant churches actually to launch. And no matter whether you like Earth Day or not, the point is organizationally, yep. they have now 1 billion activities wow. a year on April 22nd. 1 billion around the globe in 175 countries. That's great. So, well, we need to kind of come up with a, you know, a color that matches color. what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got green for Earth Day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. maybe it's red or something. So. Yeah, and what was so interesting about the research that we that we uh, helped put uh, put forth, which was from the National Marriage Project um, at the University of Virginia, is that they were looking at how the economy is affecting marriage. The report was the Great mm. Recession in Marriage. And it turns out that of those who were going to divorce or separate, 39% of them said that they changed their mind. And I thought, you know what, that's, that's, that's okay, that's appropriate and it's a good thing mm. because it means that people, you know, in years ago, the marriage was an economic unit and you had, yeah. to, to, had to pull together to keep life and limb together. We might be getting back to that. I hope that people will see it as an opportunity for healing and personal growth, and it will certainly be better for children. Children are really harmed by uh, the breakdown of marriage yes. and for our culture and our children because, um, the, you know, as I said, the, the prison population is reflective of uh, people who did not grow up with yeah. both a mother and a father. Yeah. And um, also, there's another research study that showed girls whose fathers leave before age of six have a 35% chance of teen pregnancy as opposed to 5% in the general population. Well, the stats are, are alarming. And I, I remember one stat, and we're, we're going to conclude here in just a second, but uh, one stat that was interesting was, um, and I remember hearing 
uh, actually, uh, this was years ago, uh, the president said when he was addressing uh, uh, a, a group of folks who were marriage advocates across the country, he said that um, there's two statistics that are alarmingly uh, telling of where we are as a society uh, and in our economy. He said the greatest statistic for that, uh, the health of a nation, is uh, the first one at 52% was like employment or 46%, something like that. But the second greatest stat um, were healthy marriages at like 22, 24%. And so if you think about it, those are the mm -hmm. two leading indicators of where we are as a right. society and an economy. Right. And so uh, if we can do our part, Sheila, and this is what I hear you saying, is everybody do their part. Right. Jump in. Become right. part of the solution. Let's create some real-time right. results uh, for this country and others. It's not that hard mm. um, to create a marriage class and start one during that week and launch it. <laughs> ORG. And they can get all the information they need. Absolutely. Just, it's very easy. Just let us know the event you're having, and then other people can find out about it, too. Sounds good. Well, thank you again. Again, we're here with Sheila Weber from the National Marriage Week USA, and we're excited that you joined us today, and great information and great ways to get involved. <laughs>